Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Marxist Voice, the podcast of the Revolutionary Communist Party. I'm your host, Jack Ty Wilson, and today we're joined once again by Fiona Lali, who is the National Campaigns Coordinator of the Revolutionary Communist Party, as well as an independent candidate in the upcoming general election for the constituency of Stratford and Bow. Hi, Fiona. How's it going? Hi, Jack. Good, thank you. Excellent. Uh, so first of all, yeah, a general election has been announced, as I'm sure our listeners will all know. Parliament has now been dissolved officially, and for the next six weeks, there's going to be uh, yeah, a general election campaign. And yeah, before we get started, I think it's just worth pointing out uh, how much of a desperate position Sunak and the Tories are in. This uh, strong and stable 80-seat majority that was won uh, only a few years ago uh, is now turned to dust. The establishment man, Rishi Sunak, who has imposed uh, upon the Tory party uh, leadership, has now basically been forced into a position where he's clinging on by the skin of his teeth. He looks very desperate indeed. And I think by calling this general election, Sunak has signed the Tories' political death warrant. And as far as the two main parties are concerned, I think this will probably be one of the dullest general election campaigns in the history of British politics, at least in living memory. Yeah. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find any difference, really fundamental difference between the Tories program on one hand and Labour's program on the other. And I think this really exposes the sham of bourgeois democracy. All that you get is a choice between genocide enablers and austerity enablers in either red or blue. Take your pick. However, I think one aspect of this general election that will be a bit more exciting, I think, is the fact that our comrade here, Fiona, is going to be running uh, in the seat of Stratford and Bow in East London with the support of the Revolutionary Communist Party, which I think is an excellent, uh, an excellent idea. Um, so yeah, Fiona, why is it that you decided to, to, to run for this, uh, for this election? I decided to run because I think that I can genuinely represent what the real interests and needs of workers and young people are. As you just said in your introduction, when you look at the political establishment right now in Britain, they are completely united on the question of Palestine and mm -hmm. support for Israel and what Israel is doing. But they're also completely united on austerity, on the cost of living crisis, and everything that is worsening the living standards of people in Britain today. And I think that there's a lot of anger towards the Tories, but also now towards the Labour Party mm -hmm. as well. And people are are feeling a bit hopeless and like there's no alternative to what's being put on offer. And so the purpose of, of running is to show that actually there is an alternative to the whole of the way that the political establishment is set up. We represent and stand for something fundamentally different than um, what capitalism has to offer today in Britain. And I think that that connects with what the real mood in society mm -hmm. really, really is and, and is moving towards um, in terms of the direction, I suppose, that Britain is going in. So, so that's why, yeah, that's why I'm running and that's why I've got the support of the Revolutionary Communist Party. It's also because we want to show people that we can channel all of the anger that we have into an organized political force that can do something about it. Mm -hmm. We have no illusions and I have no illusions that as, a, as an individual MP, you can transform everything or transform the whole of parliament. That isn't, that isn't possible. But in conjunction with a political force outside of parliament, in conjunction with organization, in conjunction with protest movements mm -hmm. like the student encampments or like strike action, then you can be much more effective and much more powerful. And that's what, um, yeah, I would use the platform for. Mm. And what are your main slogans in this campaign that you're putting forward to try and yeah, attract people's uh, support? The main slogans that we have are, you know, we stand for welfare and not warfare. Mm -hmm. Kick the war criminals out, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The Tories and, and the Labour Party. But also to make the point that all of the money that they are allowing to be spent or they're allowing to be transferred towards Israel, all of that money should actually be used to invest in our healthcare system, mm -hmm. in the education system. I mean, part of how the Palestine movement has been taking place in um, in Britain, um, well, also, sorry, internationally in America first, uh, on the university campuses, you know, the, this question of divest from the arms companies, the fact that universities invest in arms companies Companies, when universities themselves are also on the brink of bankruptcy, mm -hmm. uh, they're cutting courses, they're sacking mm -hmm. whole um, big groups of staff all in one go. All of that represents the completely backward way in which 
um, things are invested in under capitalism, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because profit is what motivates them, not the genuine needs and interests of what people people need in order to live their lives. So yeah, welfare, not warfare. All of that money should be used for us because the money to house everyone, to feed everyone, to clothe everyone, the money for that exists. Britain is a very wealthy country. Mm-hmm. It's probably in the top 10 wealthy countries, I think in the world, yeah. right? So why do we have soaring poverty? Why mm-hmm. do we have soaring homelessness? Why do we have millions of people using food banks? It's because a very small group of people hoard all of that wealth for themselves. Um, and what we're saying, what I'm saying is that that money should be used to invest in what we, we actually want and what we actually, what we actually need. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's a really good point because sometimes a question that you come across when you're doing uh, you know, stalls uh, out on the street or selling the communist newspaper, for example, people might come up and say, What's Palestine got to do with us here in Britain? Haven't we got enough problems here in Britain as well? But I think what you've just said there clearly highlights how this is a a class question which draws everything together. It's the same imperialists in parliament who are funding wars abroad that are cutting living standards, attacking workers here in Britain as well. So yeah, I think that's a a very good point. Mm. Um, So yeah, what has the response been so far to the launch of this campaign? I know it's very early days, of course, but Yeah. yeah. Has it been has it been good? The response has been amazing. I think so far 300 people have signed up to the campaign wow. on the website um, to come and help support Canvas mm-hmm. and and I think we'll be launching all the information about that very very soon. Um, and we've also raised a lot of money. I think we've already raised about 4000 pounds. Wow, that's fantastic. Which shows I would say just, yeah, the desire for people to get involved in something, right? There is a complete vacuum Mm -hmm. politically in Britain and also to a certain degree on the left as well in terms of people standing up for Palestine, yes, but also connecting it to, as we were just saying, austerity in Britain um, and the conditions of people in Britain here today. And so the response has been overwhelmingly positive with people, yeah, desperate to know how they can get involved and support. And I would say the most important thing that we're getting across is great, come and and, and support the campaign, but this isn't the only thing we want to do. It, we want to link all of this with um, you know, helping the development of the the encampments and, and the broader mm-hmm. movement and, and strike action, which ultimately is what we what we need. So you mentioned that uh, 300 people have already signed up in the past few days to support this uh, campaign. I'd be interested to know what kind of people have been uh, signing up. Yeah, overwhelmingly, I would say young people. Um, young people have been sending me lots of messages of support and signing up to the campaign. And I don't think that's a coincidence, right? I think it's it's very much related to the fact that if you're if you're an 18 year old uh, right now, it's your first time you're going to be able to vote and you're looking at the political field and you've got Rishi Sunak on one side and Keir Starmer on mm-hmm. the other, there is no future for you in mm-hmm. what these people are offering. They're offering the same austerity and, and the same problems. And it's and it's linked to the broader feelings in society um, about what does my future look like under capitalism? I mean, if you're 18, you were, I don't know how old you were when the 2008 financial crash happened. You were very young. young. <laughs> <laughs> you were very young. Um, and all you have seen is chaos. Mm-hmm. Um, banks, uh, you know, hiking interest rates, you know, mm-hmm. parents probably, you know, suffering under mm-hmm. mortgage increases, the climate strike movement, mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter, austerity. That has been your whole experience of politics. And young people really want something different from mm-hmm. that. And, and also young people in the main, we have recognized, are very interested in and attracted to revolutionary ideas mm-hmm. and even communist ideas. And, and so they're not afraid or um, put off by the communist symbols yeah. or, or um, message that we're also bringing to this campaign. In fact, they're excited by it because I would say it's not enough to just be against something. You have to be for something as well. Mm-hmm. And, and we are not just against the Tories and we are not just against the, lab- the Labour Party. We are for the complete transformation of society and for planning the economy on the base of need and not profit. We are for socialism um, and, and eventually communism. That mm-hmm. is what we stand for. And I think that is what young people are, are looking towards because this system offers them nothing. Yeah. I mean, to take one example of that, Sunak uh, has recently uh, pledged a new policy to bring back uh, national service, yeah. uh, yeah, drafting uh, uh, 18 year olds into the army or to yeah. do you know, volunteering work on the weekends and so on. So that's yeah. the future that they've got under, under a Tory government. Yeah. What do you make of, uh, of that policy announcement? <laughs> yeah. I, 
<laughs> it beggars belief, really. It beggars belief. I don't know if he's got a holiday booked for the 5th of July <laughs> that he I just wants so. to sure he ensure, has. He's very rich. <laughs> ensure he can get on or, or it's bizarre. But it's bizarre because, look, young people are obviously repulsed by this policy announcement um, and there's been lots of jokes and memes about mm-hmm. it online. And what does that represent? It represents the fact that young people are not invested in or tied up in the propaganda or the nationalistic mm-hmm. um, uh, idea of Britain that the Tories are trying to promote or have tried to promote, I would say actually, ever since the Brexit campaign, which is to try and reignite this rule Britannia, rule mm-hmm. the waves um, idea of Britain being this important country on the world stage and trying to hype up the army and all of this kind of stuff. And the fact that that makes no impact on on young people today is really quite significant. And it shows that a lot of the institutions of of the country, a lot of the main institutions of the state Mm. no longer receive the same support or respect that they Mm. might have done in the past, which means that there's a bit of a shift in in consciousness fundamentally. Mm -hmm. There's a shift in how people are relating to to what they're seeing around them. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to believe that the government and the state acts as a neutral arbiter over our lives. And, you know, every now and then we elect different people to try and help change things Mm -hmm. on different policies. But as you said in the introduction, all of the actions over the last five years have exposed what a complete sham parliament is as Mm -hmm. a whole. We've had, what, four Tory, four or five Tory prime ministers Mm now. Um, Barely any of them were actually elected by the the general public. And now, okay, we're going to have an election, but you've got Keir Starmer Mm -hmm. who represents the exact same thing. People are so, so sick of it. And so, yeah, the announcement of national service, I mean... Yeah, there's no wonder that the response of most people is just to laugh because, yeah, they're not invested in it. And why would they? they these people don't invest in them. Mm-hmm. So why should they invest in a system that offers them nothing but worsening living standards, higher tuition fees, higher rents? So we've got six weeks to go until the vote takes place. What is that campaign going to look like week by week? And most importantly, how can the viewers and listeners at home get involved and support this campaign? So we are going to have hundreds of people. I mean, hundreds of people have already signed up, which is excellent. And we will, we will gladly take many, many more, as many people as possible. And we're going to run huge mass canvassing sessions all across the constituency. The first one's going to begin this weekend on Saturday. And we will go door knocking. We will have stalls and we're going to speak to as many people as possible about, um, about our program, about our ideas, about the needs for welfare and not warfare and, and connect with people in terms of yeah the questions and, and the problems they have in in their lives but we're not going to limit this campaign just to people who can vote mm-hmm. if for whatever reason they can't vote or maybe they're 17 or 16 or something like this because what we're trying to do here is build a political force that um, lasts beyond just the 4th of July mm-hmm. actually I'm much more interested in the 5th of July than Mm -hmm. the 4th of July, because it's on the 5th of July that we can expect, to be honest, a right-wing Labour government to be in power. And what we're trying to prepare through the campaign, and obviously, hopefully we win and I win, but what we want to prepare is a a political force that can fight a Labour government Mm -hmm. when they come to power, that has roots in the community as much as possible and is prepared, one, to reignite the student encampment movement um, when Freshers comes about in September and October, but also to utilise every avenue we currently have. Um, One of the biggest ones being strike action Mm. uh, in order to take action over the war in Gaza, but not just that, but take action over the war in our daily lives Mm. In Britain, the class war because of austerity and and what is being implemented here. But this sort of stuff doesn't come about from the drop of a hat. It doesn't come about from just shouting or declaring it from the sidelines. It requires political preparation. It requires organization. And so that is what we're going to fight for. That is what we're going to do during this election campaign. And the best way for people to get involved is if they can come and join us on the ground talking to people. That would be amazing. But also financially, we need support um, for the printing of leaflets, for the booking of rooms, um, and and many other logistical tasks that go along with, with running an election campaign like this. And I think on that basis, with the support that I've already received, but also with the snowball effect of Mm. having more people on the ground who are convinced of the political arguments, 
I think we will run a huge, powerful campaign. And I think we could win on that basis. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's ultimately what we're what we're striving to do. Yeah, I think from, from what you've said, it sounds to me like this isn't just going to be uh, you know, a local campaign, but I think the, the spotlight is going to be shone on this across the country. I think this is a real opportunity for us to raise revolutionary communist demands and ideas on a national scale, really. Yeah. So even if you're not based in London or, or in East London, there's still plenty that you can do. You can donate, you can get your friends and, and family and, and co-workers and so on to support the campaign. Campaign. And also share things on social media as yeah. well. There's going to be a lot of uh, campaign material, like uh, you know, statements, uh, speeches, all these kinds of things, updates about the campaign. People should share that far and wide so we can really raise the profile of obviously yourself as the independent candidate, but also the RCP uh, as well. Yeah. So yeah, for anyone at home who wants to uh, sign up to get involved, you can head to fionalalircp.com. There's a form there that you can sign up uh, to. And there's also a WhatsApp group as well, where you can receive announcements about the campaign, as well as a link to donate to the campaign uh, as well. So I think that covers pretty much everything that we wanted to go over uh, for today, but I'm pretty sure that we'll have you back on the podcast uh, before long, maybe next week for an update on the campaign. Um, But yeah, once again, thanks to our listeners for tuning in to Marxist Voice. Uh, A reminder that this is the podcast of the Revolutionary Communist Party. And if you agree with the ideas and perspectives that we put forward uh, in this show, then you need to get organized. You need to join the Revolutionary Communist Party and fight for a communist future. If you head to the link in the show notes of this podcast, you can find the link to join the party, to subscribe to our newspaper and magazine, as well as to donate to the party uh, as well. But yeah, that brings us to the end. So we'll see you next week. And make sure you stay subscribed to Marxist Voice for future episodes covering Marxist theory, revolutionary history, current events, and party building. Brought to you by the Revolutionary Communist Party.